Developing the project schedule is key to project success. This includes the ability to create a project schedule network diagram. Once you have determined the attributes of activities, you will be able to determine where dependencies exist and how to properly sequence activities. A helpful exercise is to build a project schedule network diagram given a table of activities. In this table, each activity is listed along with its duration and predecessor or predecessors. Using the table, try to create a network diagram that complies with the predecessor relationships. Let's start with activity A. It has no predecessor, so we can assume that this must be the first activity in our network diagram. Take a few minutes and try to complete the network diagram on your own. You may pause the video and resume when you're ready. How did you do? If you are a little stuck, don't worry. We will review this together, step by step. Activity A is the start of the schedule network diagram. Activities B, C, and D all list activity A as a predecessor. However, they have no dependencies upon each other. This means that these activities can occur simultaneously. After activity A, the diagram splits into three separate paths. This is called divergence. Now, we should determine which activities in the table list activity B, C, or D as predecessors. Can you determine what will happen next? You may pause the video at any time to determine the answer, and then resume the video when you're ready to hear the correct answer. Since activities B, C, and D are all predecessors to activity E, the paths merge together again. This is called convergence. What happens next? Feel free to pause the video at any time and resume when you're ready. Activities F and G are each preceded by E, but they have no dependencies upon one another. We have another point of divergence where the path splits. There is one last step. Can you complete the network diagram? If you'd like more time to think about your answer, just pause the video and resume when you're ready. Activities F and G are predecessors to activity H. They converge into this last activity. If you were able to complete this network diagram from the data in the chart, congratulations! This is a very useful skill for developing the schedule. Now that you have completed the project schedule network diagram, there is some additional information you can gather about your schedule. Since you know the duration of each activity as well as the paths, you can identify the critical path. Take a moment and try to determine which path is the critical path. You may pause the video at any time to determine the answer and then resume the video when you're ready to hear the correct answer. Were you able to do it? If not, don't worry. We're going to cover the steps now. There are a few ways we can go about determining the critical path. The first way is very detailed and careful. We can list each of the unique paths that exist in this network diagram. Did you realize there are actually six distinct paths? If so, that's pretty good. Next, you can add the durations of the activities along each path. The path with the longest duration is the critical path. Remember I said that this was the detailed, careful way of identifying the critical path? Now I will show you the shortcut. Let's start with activity A. Activity A is on all paths, so we will count its duration of three. Next, we have three activities happening simultaneously. We will choose the activity with the longest duration. That is activity C with a duration of five. Activity E is on all paths, so we will count its duration of three. Activity F and activity G happen simultaneously, so we will count activity F with the higher duration of six. The H is on all paths, so we will count its duration of three. So by simply doing a quick comparison of activity durations, we could pick the activities that must be on the critical path. In this case, they are A, C, E, F, and H. We add all of their durations and come up with 20. By using this shortcut, it isn't necessary to identify each of the unique paths. There is something else you can determine by comparing the critical path duration to the durations of the other paths. Can you figure out what that is? Feel free to pause the video at any time and resume when you're ready. If you said total float, 
You are correct. By subtracting the duration of any path from the duration of the critical path, you can determine how much total float is available along that path. So let's summarize. Remember that we started this process with a very simple table containing basic information about our project activities. With minimal information, you can create a project schedule network diagram, determine the critical path and the total flow along the non-critical paths. The ability to do this will prove extremely helpful when developing your project schedule.